The church was started in 1840 by a, uh, a retired sea captain named uh, Captain Conger, and he wanted to see a church, an established church here in Jacksonville. He came to Jacksonville in 1838. All of the churches worshiped in one building that was called the Block House, and it looked very much like a, a fort with small windows to protect the, uh, the people inside from the Indian raids. And uh, Conger arranged to have territorial legislature to issue a charter for the First Presbyterian Church, so that was the beginning. The original worship building was uh, Captain Conger purchased the Baptist Chapel, which was over on Noonan and Duval Street. Two years later, he sold it to the Methodist group for $600. And that's the very site of the Methodist Church now on Duval and Union. This sanctuary was built in 1902 after the Great Fire. And after they built it, after about 20 years, they decided they didn't like what they had built and it needed to be expanded. They took out a loan and redid the sanctuary. And then uh, the Depression hit. The bank began calling and if the church could not come up with some payments and some sort of plan, they were gonna have to foreclose. And on one particular Sunday, uh, the pastor of the church shared with the congregation of the dire straits they were in. And as they passed the collection plate, the pastor's wife took off her wedding band and put the wedding band into the collection plate. Of course, the plate gets passed up and down the rows and the pews. And as other people saw that she had put in her wedding band, the women, other women began putting in their wedding bands. They collected enough that day, not to pay the bank off, but at least to hold the bank off for a while where they could get their plans together. And one of the windows given by the Williams family in the very back of the sanctuary, it was given uh, in 1930. And it was given in honor of the women that saved First Presbyterian Church. It's just one small slice of the history of this church that for generations has been here serving, um, pointing people to Jesus Christ, reaching out to the homeless in recent decades, and serving the needs of this community. Stained glass windows were developed for people who couldn't read. And so when they came to church, they could look at a stained glass window and they would see an event in the Bible. So for illiterate people, it was the way that they could read the Bible in picture form. Uh, when Robert came in 2000, he was under the impression that all the old documents had burned in the fire. But over the course of the years, they were finding letters, papers, pictures. And so the leaders of the church decided to, in celebration of the 175th, to get all that stuff together to see what we had. So they um, agreed to hire an archivist. She's the, her name is Turin Rodriguez Boyette. And downstairs, what was at one time was the dining room. It is now our workshop. The first phase is getting the exhibit together for the 175th. But the second phase is taking all that stuff that's downstairs and putting it together, cataloging it in a workable form. And what we've what started in 1840, and we've documented to, to 2015. My, my hope, my prayer is from 2015, plus a, another 175 years, that those, those people whom we will never know will gain from what we're doing today by establishing this archive. Mm -hmm.